Dunn's Fold is a special place. Backed by the South Downs with its ancient wooded Vale of the Weald, since medieval times it's been a rich agricultural area with some ancient and important houses. The airfield, situated between Allfold and Dunsfold, was built in 1942, in just 18 weeks, by the Canadian Army. They wrote at the time, to many it appeared the finest pastoral scene in England, to destroy it seemed a criminal act. And so a covenant was devised to protect its future. It said that if ever there came a time when the airfield was no longer needed, then it should be returned to agricultural fields. Sadly, this covenant was removed by Waverley Borough Council in 1999. Nowadays, it's the location of the Top Gear track and annually holds the village air show Wings and Wheels. This quiet rural village, currently home to a thousand villagers, has been described as quintessentially English. It's part of the Surrey Hills, attracting walkers, cyclists and horse riders. Its beautiful hills and rural location appreciated by locals and visitors alike. But Dunsfold Park Aerodrome has been under threat, and this is the second attempt to develop the site as a new town. The previous application was rejected by local and national government in 2009. Now, the current owners have reapplied to develop the site, starting with construction of 1,800 new homes, with plans to increase the number to 3,400. This would be the first new town in Waverley's history. They've never been responsible for development of this size. The first new town plan was rejected because there was no infrastructure to support it. Nothing has changed since then. Dunsfold Park exists in what is currently an unsustainable location due to the absence of satisfactory transport links and services. Highways England have stated that the A3 is already operating at full capacity. There are daily queues as far back as Milford in the morning rush hour and there can be a 40-minute delay getting past Guildford at the other end of the day. The other main route, the A281, takes you to Guildford. It's not a dual carriageway and goes through the centre of several villages like Bramley and Shalford. It's easily blocked. It takes no more than a badly parked delivery van to bring it to a standstill substantially increasing the number of cars and HGVs on this already overstretched network is clearly not an option. The property developers suggest the new residents of Dunsfold Park would be expected to enrol in a car scheme, share cars or use a special bus service. How can they be denied access to vehicles when the existing local population are fully reliant on them? The nearest train station is over six miles away at Milford, via country lanes. Station car parks are costly, if you can find a space. There's a three-year waiting list for an annual ticket for Godalming Station car park. At Farncombe and Milford, costs are £6.50 a day. Once on the train, actually getting a seat at peak times is a challenge. To make Dunsfold Park sustainable, would take a long time, involve huge construction and be very expensive. Nevertheless, our government is demanding and putting huge pressure on areas like Waverley and indeed across the whole country to provide massively increased house building. Annual housing needs figures in this borough have risen to 519 new homes to be built each year. Property developers take advantage of these circumstances, keen to make their profits. Local councils offer planning permission in return for affordable housing. Donations from property developers make up a large part of Conservative Party funds. Is it any surprise they've been given carte blanche to build wherever they like? 
But these politicians won't be in office by the time the developments are completed. They won't be here to answer questions to solve the problems, and nor will the property developers. Will our descendants thank us for allowing these profiteers to build in the wrong place? Locals have noticed that the airfield site has been deliberately browned recently. More and more buildings and planes and lorries, whereas it used to be mostly grassland. There is ancient woodland on the site, which would need to be felled to make way for the proposed new town new access. There are serious concerns about flooding, sewerage and industrial runoff. As for any archaeological remains which may lie there, or rare species amongst the abundant wildlife, again these details have yet to be researched, let alone taken into account. Research into other new town constructs shows that developers tend to sweeten their pitch to the local council by promising to fund new schools, health centres, other amenities and public spaces. The firms that build the housing have tended to drag their feet, and these amenities only arrive once all the homes have been built. In Dunsfold's case, this could take 20 years, so a whole generation of families could live there without any facilities at all. Research into other new towns shows there is a higher number of cars per household than existing residents in the surrounding area. Nearly all the new residents tend to work some distance away, and their young people get bored because of limited facilities and transport. Let's ask, is it fair to place thousands of families in a soulless urban sprawl, with up to a hundred dwellings per acre, in the middle of the countryside? How will we feel when the history and natural environment is paved over and lost forever? We all understand the need for more housing, of course we do. But location is key, and making money shouldn't take priority. It's time to stand up to the government and the property developers and preserve our environment. Let's fight for housing, but in the right place.